Today, I wanna to share with you the essential gear that I take on location with me for every shoot. I'm going to cover my camera, lens, trigger, modifier, strobe, light stand, and more. Everybody, Lindsay Adler here. As a portrait and fashion photographer, I have to be versatile. I shoot in the studio and on location. Now, many of my behind the scenes videos and tutorials are in the studio because I love the control of the studio and the creativity of the studio. But actually, a lot of my commercial work is outdoors on location. Today, I wanted to take you through my essential location gear, including my lighting, light stands, camera gear, and more. Now, when I go on location, I'm a gear nerd, and so I have a lot of different tools at my disposal. Yet, there are certain tools I bring pretty much every time. These are my go-to that help me problem solve. So let's actually begin with the essentials with my camera, lens, and trigger. The camera that I always shoot is the Canon R5. Now, on location, this is extremely helpful because it is a mirrorless camera. I can turn on exposure simulation so that I can see the exposure in real time. So as the light gets brighter or darker, or as I change my camera settings, I can actually preview it in the back of the camera. This helps me shoot faster, be more accurate. Furthermore, the camera has face and eye tracking. This is extremely helpful because it allows me to shoot at wide apertures. For example, I can shoot wide open. I can shoot at f1.2. The camera will find the face, find the eye closest to camera and lock focus there, which helps me be much more accurate. Now there's one lens that I grab every time I go on location, and that is a 50 millimeter 1.2, the nifty 50. The reason I love this is I can get a decent close shot without too much distortion, or I can back up and get more of an environmental shot, but all of it is extremely sharp, and it is sharp wide open at 1.2, which is really useful if I need to have the backgrounds melt away. And that's what I did during today's shoot. I shot wide open, and I was able to get mid-length shots and full-length shots all with one lens. Now, if I can take a little bit more gear with me, if I'm shooting more close-up shots, I'll grab my RF 85 millimeter 1.2. And if I need to shoot a little bit more quickly with more variability of focal length, I reach for the RF 24 to 70 2.8. Those three lenses help me achieve a ton when I'm on location. But if I just need to be lightweight, run outside, grab a few shots, or I need to not carry a big bag with me, the 50 most of the time is all I need. Next up, let's talk about my trigger and my strobe. When I shoot on location with a strobe, I always grab the Profoto B10 Plus. I absolutely love the strobe because it is small, lightweight, but has a lot of power. It is a 500 watt second strobe, which is going to be really useful on a day that is brighter or when I need to overpower ambient light. Now, speaking of overpowering ambient light, this trigger is going to become really important. I need a Profoto Air Remote TTL or a Profoto Connect Pro. Both of these allow me to use the high speed sync functions of my strobe. So what does that really mean? Typically, when you're using a strobe, you are limited by your camera's sync speed. You can't shoot faster than that without seeing the bars of your shutter. However, when I go on location, a lot of times, in order to bring down the ambient light, if I wanna shoot at a really wide aperture, I need to be able to shoot at faster than 1 200th of a second, 1 500th of a second, 1 1,000th of a second. And to do that, I need a trigger that allows me to shoot in high speed sync. And so that's why I grab one of these triggers. We've talked about the camera, the lens, the trigger, the strobe, and now let's talk about modifier. Here, I have the Westcott Rapid Box Switch Octa Medium. In other words, it is a mid-size Octabox, but what I love about it is how quickly it pops up. I can take it on location and pop it open almost like an umbrella. This saves me a ton of time. Very often, I'll be shooting with natural light, ambient light, and then if I need to add a strobe, I don't wanna to have to set up some sort of complicated modifier. So I find this to be extremely useful, and it gives me a nice, soft quality of light. The closer I bring it to my subject, the softer that quality of light will be. All right, so next up, let's talk about my light stand. You'll notice it's not actually a stand, it is a pole. Usually when I'm on location, because I am in New York City, we're not actually allowed to use tripod stands or stands in the street, but you can get away with something like this. And it also makes it really easy when you have an assistant because they can quickly hold the light out overhead. So this is a PhotoFlex Light Reach Plus. What is really nice about it, right, is the assistant can hold it, but it also can go really, really high up, which a lot of times I may be getting more dramatic angles, and so that becomes very, very useful. Now the last tool I wanna to talk about is when I'm shaping my natural light. 
Yes, I may bring a strobe and more complicated setups. Maybe I'll bring a scrim or a diffuser, but if I can only grab one tool for natural light, it is a silver and white bounce reflector. This is the Profoto Medium. I use silver if I want the fill to be more specular. I use white if I want it to be softer and a little bit more subtle. I find most of the time, unless I'm trying to achieve really dramatic results, I don't need anything more than this reflector. So there you have it. That is an overview of my essential location gear. Shoot with the Canon R5 with the 50 millimeter 1.2. Then I shoot with the Profoto B10 Plus and I need a TTL trigger to make sure that I can shoot for high speed sync. For my modifier, if I can take only one, I grab the Westcott Rapid Box Octa Medium. And then lastly, I have a bounce reflector. Those things together are my core kit. Does that mean that I don't step outside of that? Of course. And if I have multiple assistants and a bigger set, I bring the whole kit and caboodle. But if I need it to be simple, that is an overview of my gear essentials. to see the gear that I use in the making of these images and in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below and of course visit Adorama.com. And by the way, you are definitely going to want to like and subscribe because I have so many more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time everybody.